See it? Yeah. Can you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for March 7th, 2016. Mary Louise is, is still ill, and I know, I, we, again, we wish her well. And uh, uh, Rick Griffin uh, was not able to make it tonight. So we'll start off with the public comment. If anybody in the public would like to speak. Good evening, gentlemen of the board, and thank you for the opportunity to, to address you. My name is Emma Donnelly. I live at 105 Winnicunnet Road, which is just across the street in the condominium development, otherwise known as the Elms at Ross Colony. Um, I am, obviously there's a warrant article with regard to the town and bell clock that's going to be um, constructed in the center school, um, on the center school property. And um, when this became known to me, someone had asked me if I knew anything about it a few weeks ago. I took the liberty of um, putting together a, a letter to try to get some information about the project. I was not familiar with it. And um, I forwarded it to Mr. Welch, who was kind enough, and, and I'd like to thank him publicly for getting back to me as quickly as he did and providing some information about that. Um, some of that information is very informative, but there are a few things that are still not clear about that. And, and I'm here to ask if there will be a process uh, perhaps at the time that the permit is pulled for the construction for some sort of public comment or public feedback with regard to that project. Um, as you probably know, that's a 55 and over community where I reside. And we have some people there who they don't necessarily conform to the regular schedule uh, as business people. Um, in some cases, they have some health issues. And some of us do have a concern with regard to the project, the um, decibel level of the bell. Um, how often it will ring, how many times, and um, I'm not sure that there was yet, or, or maybe you know, if there was some opportunity for public comment on this that, that I or we are not aware of, um, and if not, if there will be before the construction actually takes place. We, during our public comment, we usually don't take questions and answer. It's not that type of a public comment. Oh, okay. But then just for the record, I will say that um, since we're not aware of a process through which the local citizenry had an opportunity to um, provide feedback either to this body or whatever other body has official oversight of this project, um, just for the record, I would like to say that we would very much appreciate an opportunity to do that. I know that um, another resident of the building said that they were watching a meeting one night, I think it was a budget committee meeting, and someone on the board did ask if the local citizenry had been made aware of the construction, and there was no answer forthcoming from whomever it was at the podium. So if um, we could please request um, a recommendation perhaps from this body that there will be some sort of um, public comment offered or input uh, afforded those of us who, who live locally and will be directly affected by that, we'd certainly appreciate it. Okay, thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Anybody else? <clears throat> Good evening. Richard Rennie of 29 Highland Ave. Uh, gentlemen, from what I've been reading in the paper and uh, also listening to the comments from Director Jacobs, I understand that we have a pretty serious problem with the... Uh, sewer line going from Church Street pump station out to the wastewater treatment plant. And these articles go on talking about a possible $3.1 million project to replace the, uh, the faulty line with a uh, town meetings, uh, public hearings, deliberative session. And it looks like this, if the process goes through, it's going to be, ta it's going to take a while. And I also see that uh, this board has approved $180,000 for a temporary fix to at least uh, keep things moving and uh, hopefully that this project is going to start in the spring. And I guess we're lucky enough that uh, this fault was, was found at this time before we had a catastrophe. Uh, so having said that, I guess it's going to go down to exactly why I'm here. 
On the town manager's report under item two, I would request that the board take a formal vote to close the leased parking lot on Church Street next to the Church Street uh, Church Street Station as well as this Church Street Station lot so that the two lots can be used for construction work on the sewer force main. Now, I fully understand that, yes, the, you need a staging area for all the equipment and the material for this. Now, that lot, as uh, you people know, is uh, a resident-only resident parking lot uh, by sticker, and the adjoining lot is used by the, uh, some of the businesses in the neighborhood as leased parking for their <coughs> tenants. And it's a, an excellent facility that we have in our area for the neighborhood. Now, you know, having said that, I'm not against this project. Believe me, I'm not. Uh, the priority for me is that I'm going to be able to still flush. You know, so <clears throat> I'm willing to accept the fact that, yes, there is going to be an inconvenience at times for us not to be able to use that lot. So I guess what I'm asking for is in the consideration when you talk about item number two, that uh, you consider the fact that right across the street is one of our large municipal lots. And I am requesting that uh, in your deliberation for this, uh, this closure, that you do include the, fa the uh, uh, item that resident-only parking stickered people be allowed to use that lot. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, you know, uh, if that happens, we're going to lose revenue because uh, uh, that lot does generate a lot of revenue. But think about it for a second. That lot is owned by the Diocese of Manchester, and the town leases it from them, or from the diocese. And yes, we do uh, recover some money to pay for that lease, but and you can't, I don't think you can equate the fact that we're going to lose money at that lot over a consistent uh, period. Because if you look at all of the other lots, it fluctuates. The amount of revenue that is generated depends on the weather, depends on the amount of uh, venues that are at the beach. So to say that we're going to lose money if we allow residents to park in that lot, I, I don't think it's a valid argument. So uh, again, uh, Money should not be the, the prime driving force here that we, we may lose money by allows, allowing residents to park there. You know, we are taxpayers. We do pay for, the, uh, uh, for that lease agreement. Uh, and I think with this process going, this uh, project going on, that we do be allowed as residents to use that lot for the, uh, the, the time frame that it was ta that it'll take for either the temporary fix to that line and the permanent fix. So I am asking you to take that under consideration to allow residents with a resident only sticker parker, parking sticker to use that lot, uh, that lot as, the, as needed. Thank you. Just so you know, yes. last, last week when, when uh, the public works director here, that part of that was part of that discussion that was here. All right, fine. As long as I just want to bring it up on the table so that discussion continues. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Preston. <clears> Thank <throat> hey, Mr. Brown. You look good in that chair. I'm open to change some of your minds. I'm 38. This board's members always seem to give kudos to the HBAC and its nine members. The same can be said about department heads. I passed on to you copies of the HBAC meeting minutes from September 2012 until January 2015. It showed the majority owner, the casino, would never meet with the HBAC after many invitations. They also showed department head support, serious consideration of ideas. I urge you to scan these minutes to get a little feel for the nine members of the HBAC who work hard for this town. The fact that the HBAC did not take a position to support Article 38 speaks volumes to me. Their meeting was last Tuesday, October 1st. Let's support them. In the agenda, in the draft of the minutes of the February 22nd meeting, 
Mr. Manager stated on page nine, they've been paying taxes on it for almost 180 years, and we're talking about East Street. It would not be kosher, as far as the business community is concerned, to say that you do not own it anymore. But the town has, for 120 years, allowed them to use it. They have developed it, and they have future plans to develop the property. To this, I say they never did own it. And it would not be kosher to the HBAC or Hampton taxpayers to give this land away without hearing what might be future plans to develop the property. The voters of Hampton do not have enough information to rush to discontinue East Street. If this situation has existed for 120 years, then one or two more won't make much of a difference. They may have paid some taxes, but how much? They also made revenue, how much? This is truly a quagmire. But the way I see it, the only innocent parties in all of this are the same ones who you think should be the ones that have to make it right. Hampton taxpayers should not give up a valuable asset at this time with the $375,000 update of the transportation section of the master plan. We can revisit this in a year or two after the majority owner of the casino sits down with the HBAC. I have no doubt that the Deneens, the Grand Masons, the Shockeys, and the Wadhouse family would have met with the HBAC if invited. Now is not the time. Please vote on 38 at Winnicott High School tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you very much. And I hope I can swing some of you guys because when you close the curtain, we can all do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Anybody else? This is annoying. Jerry Zanoy here, 16 President's Circle in Hampton. Uh, Norm Soberdick is out of town, so I'm speaking on behalf of the rational taxpayers of Hampton as well. <coughs> in the town manager's report uh, on the agenda for tonight, this was stated. Recent attempts by certain individuals to question the town auditors regarding the audit contained language that was considered by the auditors to be threatening and harassing. All communications concerning the audits are to be addressed to the Board of Selectmen by prior vote of the Board as engaged, as engagement with the auditors is only between the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Finance Director. That was on the agenda for tonight's discussion. That's why I'm here. Chronologically speaking, the 2014 audit is what we're talking about. It took one year to complete. Finally, it was completed and reported on in December of 15. We had a chance to look at the audit quickly, not quickly, but comprehensively we did. And uh, a lot of that scrutinization, because it was online, we come up with three questions. The Rational Taxpayers of Hampton came up with three questions that had substance, true substance, technical substance. We posed, uh, we, we sent those questions to Mrs. Woosley to pose them on our behalf. She was tabled because of the lack of protocol. The questions were not addressed. The auditor was sitting right here. The auditor was given a heads up that these questions were going to be answer, questioned, uh, come up because she forwarded the uh, questions to him. So he was prepared, I'm sure, having spent a year doing the audit. Anyway, it was declared, it was argued that protocol wasn't followed and that Mr. Wydell didn't have a copy, you didn't have a copy, Rusty Town Manager didn't have a copy. Finance director didn't have a copy of the question, so nobody was prepared. It was said that this will be brought up and protocol will be discussed so that these questions get answered. Two and a half months have passed. No protocol have been discussed in public anyway that we have seen. The questions have gone unanswered. One of the questions in particular intrigued me because they deal with the unassigned fund balance and a change in methodology and procedures on how to arrive at it. To this day, I couldn't tell you what that is, that fund balance. And I've heard what uh, Christy has said as to what it is. <clears throat> I, I, I have my doubts about it. That's why we have to answer these questions. So a lot of frustration, a member of our committee wrote to the auditor and said, hey, here are the questions. Can you give us some answers? We got no response. 
Norm Silverdick wrote on his letterhead to the auditor, here are the questions, we'd like a response. No answer. We're going to get answers, hopefully cooperatively, but we're going to get answers. Um, the auditor can come here and, and, and reiterate the question and give us an answer right here, or he can put it in writing or both. We want answers to those three questions. It's paid for by public money, these audits. And we're representing, we're, as rational taxpayers of Hampton, we're speaking out on this issue because not too many people can read 30, 40, 50 page audit results and come away with some kind of substantial questions, but we did. And they were not addressed. So he can either come here and speak and we'll listen very carefully and he'll be uh, uh, captured on video or he can write and respond to the town and we'll get a copy. But they have to be responded to. It took a year to do this audit and I understand the GASB involvement. But when it was finally finished and completed, we looked at it carefully and we came up with these three questions and we're serious about these questions. So I asked that the, the, the Board of Selectmen help us here cooperate and uh, do as I say or recommend Get this guy here, Mr. Egan, as it is, and let him respond to these three questions, frankly and directly, and we'll listen. If we have further questions, we will ask. Or we'll let him do it in writing. We'll scrutinize it, and if we have further questions, we will ask. Hopefully, we can get this thing over with, because it's been dragging for two and a half months, and these questions are unanswered as of right now, and they have never been developed in terms of a protocol. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Yes, sir. Good evening, I'm Mike St. Laurent. I'm the uh, race director for the Half of the Hamptons race. Just occurred yesterday, I want to take this opportunity to thank the town for allowing us to host the race. We had a little bit under a thousand people on a beautiful day in Hampton, filled up the beach, it was a lot of fun. And I wanted to report back to you, to the board and to the town, we made a great effort to reduce the inconvenience to the residents on Little River Road and High Street and Barber and Little River. We are able to pulse the runners through every two or three minutes to be able to let a car go through every two to three minutes, which was probably about the same amount of time we waited at a stoplight, except for one very short time where it was about 10 to 12 minutes for one period. So we reduced it from a major inconvenience to a much smaller inconvenience. And on top of that, our runners were brought to us and we worked together with the Rotary and we brought over 1,100 uh, articles of food, uh, 55 huge uh, containers of food. They're going to be given out to the five food pantries uh, throughout the region and made some donations to the local track team. And uh, the race will also be funding, uh, sponsoring the Easter egg hunt coming up for Hampton, coming right up. So I want to thank you so much and report back. Glad you were able to bring good weather that day, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Does anybody else would like to speak? Yes, sir. No snow. Four Line Street. A few years ago, the selecting board decided to cut back pickup on the beach as far as trash and recycle goes. And now, last month, all of a sudden, the board of selectmen decided to uh, install pickup of trash or sorry, recycle of various condos. What I'm asking you guys to do is just make the beach whole again. Go back to the original schedule you had on prior to reducing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for comments. Uh, announcements and community calendar? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, speedy recovered in Mary Louise. I hope she's getting better. I hope she's feeling better. Um, tomorrow is voting day. Please get out and vote. There's lots of uh, issues to be voted on. As you can see, people have a lot of concerns. Please read the Warren articles. Um, know what you're voting on and vote, please. Thank you. Mr. Bean? I have no comments, Mr. Bridal. Thank you. Very good. And again, we wish Mary Louise well. And again, people urge you to get out and vote tomorrow. Next thing we have is consent agenda. First item is uh, 2016 veteran requalifications. Number two is 2016's new veterans credits. Number three is 2016 <coughs> elderly requalification. 
four is 2016 disability requalifications. Five is a Hampton Cemetery deed. Six is 181 Ashworth Ave. Termination of a lease, quick claim deed, HUD closing statement, and declaration of understanding. Number seven is a parade and public gathering for the Blue Ocean Society Marine Conservation Run for the Ocean on 6416. The Alzheimer's Ends Association Ride to End Alzheimer's 611. We have a raffle permit from Experience Hampton. We have donations to the Conservation Commission. A is uh, Charlie Gasparini's Eagle Pro Scout Project. And B is the Rain Barrel Program. Yep. So, so moved. Motion by Mr. B and seconded by Mr. Waddell. All those in favor? Appointments. Mr. Jacobs. How are you, sir? Good evening. Good evening. We've been having a lot of fun. Uh, Church Street Force Me. We did meet uh, last Thursday with our engineers, Wright Pierce. Uh, went down through all the cost estimates and uh, plan of attack, if you will, and um, have still agreed on the same plan that we talked about last week, basically to open it up. Um, we firmed those plans up um, by meeting today with the state of New Hampshire uh, Wetlands Bureau, and uh, that was Eben Lewis. Mm -hmm and Chris Nash from the Coastal Program. He also works for uh, Fish and Game. He's the gentleman who identified uh, the high uh, fecal counts back in early February. Basically, the plan of attack at this point is by Wednesday, we are applying for an emergency wetlands permit to uh, access the marsh, open it up. Uh, we're gonna be using Severino Construction to actually make the pipe repair itself. They've actually already gone ahead and purchased the pipe, at least the, the connections that we need. Uh, and we're actually going to be using what they call floatable mats to actually traverse out onto the marsh. Uh, we're not going to be building a road like they did in 1987. So we're hoping that uh, the impact will be uh, almost minimal. Uh, we're planning on one week of access, one week of construction. Uh, and then one week to uh, back out, if you will, pull up the mats and our gear. Uh, based upon having that as a successful action, uh, we've also instructed Wright Pierce to start moving ahead, uh, formalizing a proposal or a contract to come uh, with the uh, idea or intent of going up Route 101. We did also float that idea by the Wetlands Bureau today. Um, as that was the most enthusiastic comment we got today out of the Wellness Bureau uh, representative, uh, very supportive of, uh, if you will, being done with the marsh and any future connections under the marsh and, and going up 101. So uh, with that, that's how we're proceeding. Could take any questions, and Jen has always has done the lion's share of the phone calls and the the paperwork. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Not up with Mr. Welch, you got any? No, I'm um, gonna yield the board. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds like you guys are doing a great job. I mean, I'm glad the state cooperated, and, and that, you know, you get the permits and stuff, which sounds good. It sounds like you're ready to do the investigation, and yep. we, it's nothing we can do until to get it dug up, right? We till we get it open, we really don't won't know what we're keep our we're fingers up to. crossed, and if we're church goes, we can go to church, and <laughs> we did. Oh. Uh, Part of the thing that they did last week also was they, uh, we actually uh, vacuumed out uh, 10,000 gallons of the water that was in that force main. Force main holds about 27,000 gallons. We knew we wouldn't get it all. We're not going to get what settles in the lowest part. But it was so effective that where the weep hole was, we were actually we drew that down. We were actually sucking out water from the marsh, hmm. water that we put there, but. Um, so we feel pretty confident that it's probably a 
a manageable size um, break in terms of uh, proportion and that uh, God willing we'll get it repaired and be up and running with two force mains to take us through the summer. They think we'll have an answer. We hope to start with mats next Monday. That will take us through the week. The following week, we'll get into the ground. So you're about two weeks 18th. away. Yeah. Okay. Super. Fred will be the first to know, and you'll be the second. Twenty third or so. <laughs> is it? Right. Yeah, because next week is 14th, 14th for setup. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so you. the week, the week of the twenty first is when we'll actually get those answers. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Bead. I have nothing. Thank you. Okay. Excellent job as always, keeping us informed. Okay. Since you two have been on there, uh, when we've had events in town. We've had projects in town. You guys have done an excellent job at keeping this board and the citizens informed. Thank you. Thank you. I just have um, I have a couple of things when I do my report. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Now we have the approval of the minutes. February twenty second. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. February 29th, sealed non public. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, everybody please remember to vote tomorrow. If you're from Chicago, you can vote early and often. <coughs> uh, it's March 8th, 2016, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Winnicott High School. Please go, it's very important. I would request that the board take a formal vote to close the lease parking lot on Church Street next to the Church Street Station, as well as the Church Street Station lot, so that the two lots can be used for construction work on the sewer force mains. Now, Fred, is this just for the next month or so while they're working down there? Until they finish the work. Uh, they're going to need places to assemble the material. Um, <clears throat> if the town does, vote to and the board decides to submit the application to vote for uh, putting the replacement mains down uh, 101 then that will be the uh, with the work yard for the equipment do we know when that pipe. would happen after a special town meeting so it could be a while could be a little while especially if we find yeah. out what's going on with the pipe well and, and how, how we're going to fix it if we can fix the pipe and put it back in service then we'll eventually get to the force. We'll ev eventually get to replace the force main, which we hope will be sometime right after that. We'll try to push that forward to, so people can take a vote and, and get it done. If they're not able to replace the pipe or not able to fix it, then the bottom line is we're going to have to temporarily place a force main across the top of the marsh or down 101, whichever one can be approved by the DES and um, EPA along with the Army Corps, we can't operate on one pipe in the summertime. There are 14-inch pipes which have to be specially made. Uh, it requires both pipes to operate all summer in order to keep the beach from being overwhelmed by the waste that's being deposited in the station. During the fall, the winter, the spring, we can operate on one, one line. That's all we've got at the moment is one line. And it was placed in 1967, and it's an asbestos concrete pipe. Probably the worst combination of piping you can possibly get. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail because it's that old. We would have to place an 18-inch temporary line across the marsh. We could run the entire station on an 18-inch line. <clears throat> if we were to go down 101, or we certainly don't want to be in the marsh to do a replacement, um, because in 30 years you'll have the same problem all over again. We want it someplace where we can actually put our hands on it anytime we want. And we can clean it annually and we can inspect it annually. Right now it's almost 5,000 feet of pipe out there and there's the biggest uh, inspection system that there is will only go out 2,000 feet. And unfortunately because the pipe is not laid flat, but it goes under the, uh, the water courses that are out there, um, there's no way to drain those lower courses. There's just no way to get the water out of it, the material out of it. So that can't be inspected. And that's about 20% of the pipe. So we're going to try to change that 
if the town will permit it, uh, by going down Route 101 with, the, with two 18-inch pipes so that we can keep them cleaned, we can keep them inspected, and uh, the, one will service the entire town, the entire lower end of the town, uh, for the entire summer if we have to. The idea would be to switch them off and on so we can inspect both of them several times a year as well as camera them. So there's a lot going on. Uh, if we do fix the pipe, that's great. We'll be able to use it, put it back in service. If we can't fix the pipe, then we're going to have to go to an emergency special town meeting because it's going to cost thousands of dollars to put a temporary pipe across there. So we need a, do you want to take a vote now? And we we had some uh, questions last week, and we've also had heard them here today about a lot I think we said last week that they can park in any parking lot they want, whether it's a Church Street lot or the Island Path lot or the uh, Ashworth Avenue lot uh, during this temporary situation. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion. Motion that we follow, that we, give me the words there, Fred. Uh, close, close the, uh, the Church Street parking lot next to the Church Street station as well as the parking lot at the Church Street station. I make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I would also request that the board take a formal vote to exempt the emergency excavation of the Church Street's for sewer main and associated work from the purchasing policy. Otherwise, we'll be forced to halt this operation tomorrow and wait for about 30 to 45 days to get bids done. I'll make that motion. Which is not a good Second. idea. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I would request that the board authorize the Department of Public Works to submit an application to FEMA for the replacement of the Place Cove seawall. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And Mr. Chairman, I would, I would request the board move to... Um, and I sent you a memo on this uh, to waive the purchasing policy, Chapter 718, Section 15C2, uh, that requires the department to obtain three telephone quotes to purchase the equipment we already have and the materials we, are, uh, we have purchased and installed uh, and are operating for flow meters at both ends of the current concrete asbestos pipe. We're currently renting them. The um, the company has offered us a, a very good deal. They're going to give us a credit for what we spent so far for rent, and they're going to give us a substantial discount on the purchase. That's so move. It's three thousand six hundred and thirty-three dollars and sixty cents total. So moved and seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we had a communication from the auditors, um, the town auditors. The recent attempts by certain individuals to question the town auditors regarding the audit contained language that was considered by the auditors to be threatening and harassing. All communication by vote of the board uh, concerning the audit are to be addressed to the Board of Selectmen by prior vote uh, as, in, uh, as the auditors are engaged and the contract is only between the selectmen and the auditors. The town manager and the finance director, by prior vote, are to issue communications to the selectmen as they're received for your consideration. That's enough for that. Um, we have, and I think the, the gentleman from Public Works uh, has give you an idea. This is what happens to asbestos concrete pipe. Yeah under pressure as you can see the uh, these old pipes and I'm, I'm very familiar with them having worked in public works for 30 years if you put these pipes in water and uh, you rub something up against it after it's been in water for a number of years you can put your thumb right through it you can rub a hole right through it this particular um, photo is a photo of a ruptured asbestos concrete collar. Uh, that's what we don't want to have happen in the current pipe that's down there now. Uh, that pipe can take about half the load in the summertime. Right now it's running better than a million and a quarter gallons a day, which is summertime load for all intents and purposes this time of the year. 
that's a lot of load. Uh, the pipe shouldn't be taking it, and it may fail. So we want to do what we're doing out there very quickly. Uh, we're going to be coming back to the Board of Selectmen with <coughs> information regarding, um, with Town Council information regarding what must be done if the Board decides to call a special town meeting. Uh, and that would have to be done fairly soon so that we can go up to public bid and do all the other things that are necessary to lay those pipes. <coughs> we will need Army Corps of Engineer approval, Environmental Protection Agency approval, State DES approval, and State DOT approval. Um, we're already told by DES that they will grant the approval subject to Army Corps of Engineers. So uh, this is a, a lengthy process and we need to move forward with it as soon as we can find out what condition the existing pipes are in. That's it, sir. That's it. Anything yeah, I would like to uh, thank you for the report. And I'd like to, the fifth, uh, the, the last thing you, you talked about there, the communication with the auditors. I'd yes. like to address that just briefly. I mean, I saw that letter that was sent to the auditors, and I would agree 100% that it's harassment when a, t a group in town says they want an answer or else they're either going to go to the press or to the state. That's not their job to go to the auditors and do that. We hire the auditors to audit our books, to tell us whether we're following the Gatsby rules, to tell us whether we're doing things properly, to tell us that money is coming in and going out properly. That is all made public. That audit is public knowledge. I believe what's happening here is one group doesn't like the answer they're getting. Therefore, they keep asking for it over and over again. The answer to the unfunded Though the unassigned fund balance has been answered a number of times. It has been answered in the audit. It has been answered by the finance director. I think their questions have been answered also. I think yeah. the reason the change was made is because of GASPI rules, rules that we have to follow, rules in auditing. It's an auditing <laughs> uh, situation. So. It just this keeps coming up and coming up and coming up uh, that that the un, the unassigned fund balance is not what we say it is. That's not, not what the auditors say it is. Well, then do it. And if they keep having the questions and they want to do something, then go to the media or go to the state against the Board of Selectmen. Not the auditors. The auditors are hired by us. It was harassment to go to the auditors and to say that. They had no right to do that. Thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. Right. Mr. Bean. Yeah, Norm's just uh, trying to get back at us because we were doing our job on his uh, SEC problem with uh, his investment company, and uh, this is just a little payback. The three or four people from uh, the rational taxpayers, most of them elected officials that were not put back in their seat by uh, the voters of Hampton. There's three or four of them. Uh, and what I find particularly uh, problematic is it's an anonymous group. And most of them are elected officials serving on budget committees or sister boards to include Mr. Silverdick. And there's something uh, there's something eerie, and there's something uh, something not right with elected officials being on anonymous boards, sending threatening letters and uh, opining the way they do. That's not the spirit of democracy. That's not the spirit of Hampton. And uh, it hasn't worked well for people that have practiced that. If you could call it an art, but have practiced that trade. And uh, elections are coming up again tomorrow, and it'll be exciting to see those results. And uh, the people that think like Mr. Soberdick and uh, act like Mr. Soberdick and anonymity and uh, slander people's names and, and um, attack uh, accomplished executives that work for the town, um, their voice is, uh, is fading. And we, we get this from Jerry a budget committee member, and he, he knows the deal. And uh, Plosnick and Anderson have done fabulous work. On that audit this year, we did what many boards have failed to do in the, in the last several years, was to bring on our assets, show the depreciation. We were told by people that it was too expensive to do that. And Christina, uh, Christy Pilliam and uh, Fred Welch got it done for nothing. I mean, they incorporated that into their audit process and it was uh, magnificent work by the yeah, uh, finance department to do it so um, request for information they go through channels we have department heads uh, we have vendors we don't have people calling up uh, construction crews that work for the town and start evaluating um, their performance uh, accounting is no different 
if they are to suggest that the accounting firm that does the audit for this town uh, has some integrity issues, then uh, there's appropriate uh, matters. They can call the Attorney General's office. They can call the Hampton Police Department. But uh, enough with the nonsense. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All set. Old business. Any old business? For me. Nothing, sir. New business. Hampton's representative vacancy on the Coastal Risk and Hazardous Commission. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> we did receive a letter from the H uh, from the RPC, the Regional Planning Commission, <clears throat> concerning a vacancy that currently exists. From uh, Cliff Senate sent a nice little email to us. Uh, David Wood had resigned from the uh, Coastal Risk and Hazard Commission. He was the chairman, uh, and as you know, he has moved out of town, so he's no longer involved. Uh, we've received. Uh, at least one one letter that I'm aware of, one email, I should say, instead of a letter. Uh, and I understand that there are a couple of others interested in, in, in potentially filling this vacancy. So, what would you like to do? Uh, well, that's I'm going to ask the board. Is what would you like to do? We have uh, one email from an individual, and we have a request from the um, the town planner to fill the vacancy. Anything from the board? I, I make a motion that we uh, appoint the uh, town planner. I think he, you know, has the, the best interest of uh, Hampton. I think he's well versed with what's going on in town. I think it would be a, a real asset to the board and an asset to us to have him on the board. That's the motion. I second it. It's required. Motion and second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. We shall so do, sir. Um, the inter intergovernmental agreement. For the town clock. Yes, uh, that is ready for your approval as a board and then be sent over to the school board for their approval and signature. And as uh, we, we had a question tonight from a lady about talking about the bell um, or the, the construction. Noise, the construction and the noise of the clock. Um, this is going to be a town owned building. Uh, however, the building is going to be on school property mm -hmm. with, with this intergovernmental agreement. Is there, once this is signed, is there anything that comes up after this? Is they are required, uh, assuming this gets signed by everybody, uh, they are required to obtain the necessary permits uh, under the statute in order to do the work. Okay, so I, I would suggest that if anybody <coughs> has any questions about the clock to get a hold of the clock committee Good point. I, I think that would be a excellent um, yep. place to start the Hampton clock committee um, I believe they even have a website now they do HamptonClock.org, I believe yep. uh, you know I, I've heard some stuff that you know that they've talked about how the bell can be muffled and how the bell can be um, silenced at night and stuff like that and I know back when when I was a kid and the bell used to ring uh, you know we, we used to hear it but I, I believe it was it was either muffled or turned off at night and and the other thing and because I've, I've asked this question is before that bell used to sit 70 feet 80 feet in the air whatever it was now it is ground level and it's in an enclosed building so it will be there will be some muffling effect but I'm sure if uh, people want to talk to the, the clock committee and get some input, I'm sure they'd be more than willing to, to uh, take your, your, uh, your recommendations back. So with that, do you have the, the agreement? Do we? Oh, I'm sorry. I, well, we haven't, we haven't put it on proper letterhead and so forth, but uh, if the board votes it, we will see that as done so you can sign it and we can send it over to the school department for their signatures. Okay. Could, could we just, just in, in include something in that, in, in the letter? I mean, in the agreement, can you include something about the noise? Just... I'll have to have council redraft it. I mean, would that... It, I don't know. That hasn't been agreed to by the school Could we board. think about it? You can always think about it. Yeah. We'd be happy but to I mean, put anything I you want. I would like to see something in there to, to address the concerns of the people who live close by. You know, if it if it does turn out to be too loud, that that we would do something to have a way to address it. To, if, that if we would address is. the yeah. problem, and that we wouldn't, you know, burden people with something that is great for people that don't live right next hold. door. Okay, then we'll put that on hold till all right next week and have them look good. at it. Have council look at it and get the information. 
contained therein. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the Chinberg property at 263 Drakeside Road. Mr. Chairman, the question is uh, the acceptance of a bond for the off-site public improvements to $68,825. They're going to uh, put sewer in, and they're going to be off-site improvements, so they have to fund those. So th this is sewer on town property? This is sewer on town property. Uh, it's off their site, and um, the town does not have to provide for that. It's not part of the public sewer system. It's a private sewer, and they have to have a permit, and they have to post the bond for the public improvements. So we have a motion to accept Make the bond? Make a motion to accept that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And the second thing would be the connection of the private force main gravity sewer system to the town sewer system, and that's conditioned upon receiving a bond and a certificate of insurance. The bond amount has not been set as of yet. And this is something that the planning board approved, and yes, the, sir. the public works has approved it. And that's correct. So it's been through all the process, and everybody has talked about it and gone through it. I'll it make has. Motion that we do that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That's all we got. That's all we have. Any closing comments? I'll say Regina Barnes, 95 Presidential Circle. I just want to remind everyone, please go out, vote tomorrow, high school, want to it, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn at 1945. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you.